Hi, I'm Kat. I create, teach, and write tutorials on Chainmail, and I'm with Fire Mountain Gems to teach you how to make the racing stripe bracelet. It's inspired by the racing stripes on a racing car. Let's get started. We're getting ready to start the racing stripe bracelet, and the materials we're using in this project are anodized aluminum jump rings, a large size, the large glass rings, and some beads that match. I really like this finish, the Crystal AB finish. Um, on these rings, on these glass rings, you can kind of see there's a, a side that's more iridescent than the other side. It's like a two-sided glass ring, and that's actually going to come into play with this bracelet. We're also going to use the electroplated two-strand slide clasp. This is an awesome clasp for this bracelet. And this bracelet is expandable, meaning you could make many strands and make it like a four-strand bracelet, a five-strand bracelet. Um, and the, that's where these come in handy for sure. And then we have some more um, anodized aluminum uh, rings for the clasp. One thing to note before you start this bracelet is how the glass rings are arranged in the rows. So because we're working with a two-sided glass, you're going to want to note that on one strip here, which is this front strip with the little tiny beads here, we have the more iridescent side um, facing outward. And then if we turn this the other way, it's hard to see, but actually the second row here has the less iridescent side, the more clear side actually outward toward the bead. And then, if you look at it from this viewpoint, when you connect these two rows, both the iridescent sides will be on the same side of the bracelet because it's a slightly angled bracelet when you make the connection of two rows. And you want both the iridescent sides to be on the same side, so to speak, um, and the beads to be completely opposite. So it's just something to note if you're working with the two-sided glass. Um, if it doesn't make a difference to you, you can certainly just go on ahead and put the glass rings whichever direction you want. Um, it's a very slightly noticeable thing, and because I'm very particular, I tend to like to do it that way. So let's go ahead and start getting some jump rings, beads, and glass rings all together. So what we want to do is go ahead and work with your large jump rings, and you're going to go ahead and put on a glass ring and this time I'm kind of making sure that the more iridescent side is facing outward away from me and then I can go ahead and put on a bead and then I'm gonna pick up a new glass ring and I'm gonna put it on the same way so that the iridescent side is matching what I've done previously um, and that way once I close the ring and keep adding all the um, more shiny iridescent side is going to be all together. So just to compare here, we have the two shinier, more iridescent side, and then if you turn it kind of backwards, you can still see the iridescent through it, but it's more clear on the other side. So we're, all we're going to do is create a row here of the exact same thing over and over again and we're going to need the two rows one with the iridescent side closer to the beads and then one with the clear side closer to the beads so i'm just taking note of that as i'm making it so i go ahead and add a new bead on a new jump ring through the glass ring that i've already um, just uh, added and then i go ahead and look at my glass ring again and i make sure that the iridescent side is closest to the bead and close the jump ring. And I'm going to continue this until I get to the full length um, that I want for my bracelet. So this project um, doesn't shrink up at all when you connect the two rows. So you can just make it exactly the length that you want and then save, oh, you know, a, about a half of an inch for the slide clasp in your length. We're going to keep going here. Just adding to get our length. 
And once we've gotten our length, we can go ahead and start the second row. So I've completed my desired length. And if you notice, I've got all of the very iridescent side um, closest to the beads here. And I'm ready to go ahead and start my second row. And remember with the second row, we want the less iridescent side, which would be the more clear side, to go ahead and be closest to the beads. So I'm gonna go ahead and with an open jump ring, put on the glass ring and I'm noticing that it's more clear on this side, so I can add a bead and then double check my glass ring. It's more clear on this side and then I can add it on and then close that jump ring and lay it down. And if we notice here, we can maybe see in comparison how this side is much more shiny, much more iridescent and this side is just slightly more clear. Again, if you don't notice, that's totally fine. You can just keep going and add glass rings as you like. So we're gonna go ahead and keep making the same exact length as the first strand that we made. Just double checking as we go. I got the more clear side there. Okay. And keep going. And once I've completed this second row, then we're gonna go ahead and connect the rows together. And that will be where the European four and one weave comes into play. So this is European four and one, but it's with glass. So accounting for the glass means you have to think ahead and insert the glass, but then figure out how, are, how am I gonna connect the glass um, strands together to have that European flat um, traditional mesh weave look. So just go ahead and finish and get your completed desired length of that strand. Okay, so I've got my completed length here of the second strand and I have the clear side closer to the glass beads. And when I lay the first strand next to the second strand, I'm going to just slightly adjust the direction that the glass rings lay and I need to do that so that they both lay in the same direction before I go ahead and start to connect the two strands together down the middle. So what I wanna do is make sure the beads are on opposite ends. So I have beads going this way and beads coming towards me. And again, I said I want the glass rings to lean in the same direction. So you have to kind of play with it just a little bit and if I lay them all down this way, we're still not lined up yet because I have uh, the glass rings leaning in two different directions, right? So then I want to go ahead and turn it this way. And if I just slightly play with this so that I can get the glass rings to lie in that one direction, and I bring this just a little bit closer, Okay, do you notice that the glass rings are now lying in the same direction? That's what we want. And once we connect it, they will kind of force their way, kind of loosen up a little bit and force their way back a little bit so that um, the bracelet will end up with this type of look here where we have um, it leaning, the glass rings leaning in one direction, but the beads will still be in opposite sides. So let's go ahead and get ready to connect this. We're still working with the large glass rings. We do have the glass rings leaning in the same direction. They're actually pointing up and towards me and the beads are on opposite sides. And then when we connect it, it will kind of loosen up just a little bit and kind of lay a little bit flatter as we add that middle connecting piece. Now we have the clear side pointing more towards us and this bracelet is technically reversible. You could turn it either way. Um, if we look at the finished one, we can turn it this way or we can turn it this way and it does the same thing. So as long as the two sides that are similar in color of the glass rings are leaning in the same direction before you add it, then you're good. 
So let's go ahead and start adding in the connection here. So traditional European um, four in one weave, what you're doing is you're going through two and then around through two from the top. So the way we're gonna make this work is we're actually gonna be going down, well, it's kind of an up and down motion through these two rings and then picking up these two jump rings but from underneath the glass ring here. So I would have to just slightly flip it so you can see. What I'm doing is connecting these two jump rings to these two jump rings with one jump ring. And there is a path or a direction that you would go to achieve that. So you kind of go through two first and then come up and around and swoop through the other two. And to insert the jump ring, I actually want to go down through the second jump ring in my strand and curve my hand around and come up through the first jump ring. And it is following the curve of the glass ring that is behind it, right? So it's kind of mimicking what that glass ring is doing, but I'm doing it with an open jump ring. So now I can let that go. Then I can go ahead and start to pick up this one. So I want to leave um, it lined up as it is and carefully pick it up. And this time I'm going to go through the first jump ring, up through the first jump ring, and then just slightly curve down following the glass ring's uh, curve that's behind it, go down through the second jump ring. Okay, and then I can close this, and you'll see where the magic happens here, how it lines up. Right now it looks a little jumbly, and you can't see the direction, but watch this. Once I lay it down, and don't it just ignore what's going on over here, I'll fix that in a minute, but if we concentrate with what's going on right here, we can see that it's very flat, it's kind of leaning out and away from me, and um, it's all lined up exactly uh, going in the same direction. That's what we want. And then if I just play with this a minute so you can start to see, you just have to kind of line up the glass rings here just to get a preview of what's about to happen. Okay, if I just carefully line those up, do you notice that where we're going to connect is just keep going down the line here. So your next connection is going to be these two rings to these two rings, but in order to connect these two, you have to be behind this glass ring and then join it to the two rings on top here. And that's why we had to flip this back outward so we could see what we're doing. We have to flip this row back outward towards us so we can see how to make that connection. So let's do it. Right. So we're opening. Okay. And we're going down through the third ring in the first row. Down through the third ring. Curve and come up through the second ring. And that, that's the same as uh, where you started on your first row before. So down and up, and then up through the second ring in the second row, and down through the third ring in the second row, and then close. So essentially, it's, there's, a, there's a method to it here. I'm going to show you how this goes first, what it looks like. Whee! Look at that. It's all lined up. That's what we want. All right, so what's the method? The method is down, up, up, down. That's the way I like to think of it. Down, up in the same row, and then up, down in the second row. There we go, sneak it in there. You can kind of fold that second row over so that you have room to close the jump ring. And dig in there. Find room to close it. Thin nose pliers do help here because you can kind of get into the slightly tight area there. Go ahead, check your work, put it back down. Check that you've made the connection, which you have. And then you just keep going. 
And again, here's the fun reversible part. Look at that bling. Look at it. You see it? Okay. And you just keep going. But make sure you stay on that same side so that you're always doing the, um, the same method. And keep going for the full length of your bracelet, and then we're going to go ahead and add the clasp. Okay, so we've completed most of the length here. We've got just one or two more here, and then we're going to add the clasp. Okay, last one. Everything's connected. And we have our loose ends here. And if we look at this bracelet, I'll turn this this way. What we notice is we have uh, two slightly smaller, these are like the medium size jump rings, two slightly smaller at the very ends that connect directly to the two strand clasp. And there's, that's one way to end it. Say that you maybe you need just a hair of extra length, um, like a quarter of an inch extra length. We have an alternate way that we can end it. I'll show you both in advance. The alternate way is essentially adding some very tiny jump rings directly to the loops on the two strand clasp and then adding the medium jump ring. So either way you want to do it is fine. Um, we have um, both the medium and the smaller here. So I can show you both ways I'll do it on um, each side. Each side I'll do differently. Let me get this there. So, and we still haven't filled in the other part that I was talking about too, but we have to start to put on the clasp first. And take a medium jump ring and go through the glass ring. And then I'm going to check which direction the clasp is leaning as I bring it close to the bracelet. I need to make sure that the two ends here line up just as I like them. So either I'm going to decide if I'm going to go down or I'm actually going to just slightly curve it and come up with that open jump ring end. And I need to stare at it for a minute make sure that I haven't twisted the clasp, make sure that once I close that it's going to line up the way I like it. It looks correct. I'm going to double check. This is a tricky one because of the lean of the bracelet. It's a little bit tricky to get the clasp to lean in the right direction. I'm going to go ahead and actually switch my direction and go down, close it, and then double check. i got to turn the clasp back towards me and double check my lean so that the clasp leans with it. Let's double check it here. Okay. So if we look at the end here, do you notice that the clasp ring is kind of tucked in and under the clasp? It doesn't look like it's laying outward away from the clasp. This is where we're troubleshooting here. Do you see the difference between the two bracelets? So we're troubleshooting the clasp end here. We're going to actually reverse that so that that lean of this little tiny jump ring here is actually going to lean backwards. So that means I undo, I turn, and bring it up. Let's check again. Adding the clasp on this one does trip me up sometimes. So I have to make sure. That looks a lot better, doesn't it? Where the jump ring is leaning in the same direction as the other jump rings, and that way the clasp is laying on pretty straight there. So now we can go ahead and connect this last glass ring. very carefully, go through with a medium ring, double check your lean, I have to stare at this here, it looks like I'm going to come up and under to make sure, 
close it and we'll test it to make sure it's leaning correctly. How does that look? That's what we want. We want those, all the jump rings leaning in that same direction. They're all leaning this way, including the clasp ring. But this is where we have to fill in. Do you notice that all of this in the middle here is fairly loose? Right? So we don't want that loose. We want it connected just like we've done the other rows. We're going to actually have to go in there and get one of our large jump rings in there to connect all four. Okay, I have to turn the bracelet around to this direction to be able to go ahead and get through the clasp rings and um, the large rings over here with a new large jump ring to kind of fill in that space. So I have to turn it around to make the direction easier to get through. And I'm on the uh, more clear side of the bracelet and I'm going to very carefully go down through the two clasp rings and then come up through the two large rings over here. So down through these two and then back up through these two. So very carefully, the best that I can show you here, going down through the two clasp rings and the digging, it is tight in there, digging through and coming up through the two large aluminum rings and then I can close that ring. See? Right at the very end now it's filled in and lined up. So again that path is really important because it's a little bit different than what you've done um, to connect the rows before. You're going down through this one, down through this one, and then curving up and coming up through this one and up through that one. Down, down, up, up. Down, down, up, up. Okay, so now we're ready to turn the bracelet over and complete the other side. And this is the alternate ending that I wanted to show you where we're gonna use tinier jump rings, very tiny, at the very ends. And we're gonna connect them in advance so I'm gonna go ahead and just connect it in advance, just a single jump ring, close it, and then another single jump ring on the second loop and close it. And we're gonna bring that end, that unfinished end back around. Now we got these closed. And we're gonna see how it lines up. So I do not, recommend unattaching the clasp, right? It's a slide clasp, but we don't want to unattach it um, right now because you'll get confused of which direction you need to connect the rest of the clasp. Keep, keep it together. Okay, bring this end around so you can kind of see what's going on here. Let's lay it flat. Bring this end around. And what we're doing is gonna use the medium rings again just to connect directly through the glass to the small ring. And this one is already leaning the way we want it to lean because we have the tinier jump rings already in there. So the direction of the lean, I don't have to be as careful. Okay, I should be able to just go right through there, right through the glass, and then pick up the other one, the other small jump ring, tiny jump ring that I added, close it, and let's double check. Double check that it's all lined up. Looks pretty lined up to me. The medium jump ring here is lined up with the rest of the rings here. We just have it brought closer together. So take another medium jump ring. And we're going through the final glass ring. This time I'm gonna actually come from the front and around through the back of the smaller jump ring. I find that path maybe a little bit easier. Okay, through there. Let that kind of hang down again. I'll show you the path. Right, I'm coming up through 
the back of this jump ring with the leading end. Very carefully. I got it. Okay, let's double check that last one is lined up. Yes, it is. And actually, I can go ahead and unconnect the, or unattach the clasp so we can see better and we have to fill in that end. Right, so I unslid the clasp. Everything's lined up as I wanted it. And what we're doing is just filling in with one single large jump ring, the European four in one part, so that we can get it to be less loose, not as floppy right there at the end. And this is a similar path um, as to the other side, where we're actually going to go down through these two, down through this one, down through this one, and then back up through this and up through that down, down, up, up. So I'm going to widen this out so you can see. Down, down, up, and up. Down, down, up, up. Okay, make sure that's closed, lay it back out, and there's your alternate ending. Again, that you use that if you need some, just a little bit, a uh, hair of extra length. Um, otherwise, you can just end it the other way, the first way that I showed you. And the bracelet is done. I hope you have fun making this. You can wear it, sell it, or gift it. Be sure to check out my other videos and all your color options at firemountaingems.com.